This video will cover the Entity iframe module and how you can use it in your site. So there are a lot of iframe projects in the Drupal community, uh, and this one, you know, why add another one? Uh, this is for not for embedding into a site. This is for taking content, creating it, and then creating an easy way of embedding that content in another website. So kind of the reverse effect of you taking a YouTube video and embed it. You're trying to actually create an object and then copy an embed code and put it somewhere else. So let's see how this works. So I'm going to turn on the Entity iframe module. And this will allow for, in the typical Drupal installation, this will allow for compatibility with uh, taxonomy terms, users, and nodes because uh, those are three common entity types. Any entity that's fieldable, um, can, you can use this on. Uh, so you can't use it on files or vocabulary, for example. Um, so this is what you get. So I have this, this node here. You'll see I have embed code. Click, get my iframe, and copy and paste that somewhere else. Um, there's also a button for iframe version. So if I want to see what this would look like as an iframe, you can see it jumps there. Um, so look at what the settings are as to how much you, flexibility you have over this. Um, we go to config and then entity iframe. So you select the theme to use. So it's actually using uh, a theme. Uh, so we can use Garland just to illustrate what the difference is. Um, entity types, you'll see they're all selected by default. If you, for whatever reason, didn't want to allow uh, iframe you know, short codes to be generated, um, for these pages you could do it feel like this, it's probably a common setting, is to not have it on anything but nodes. Um, you can get rid of that link, it's mostly for debugging. And then the embed code, which is what you probably wanted to generate, uh, we can tweak what the default settings are. So we'll say 95% and 450 high. Uh, the reason you might do a percentage and a height in combination is uh, in the case of media that you want to scale, which I'll, I'll show in a little bit. So we switch to Garland for the embed theme. Uh, you'll see the button is gone now, so I can't embed that object. If I were to jump to uh, this user, you'll see there's no embed code information there as to how to embed uh, this user page there. Uh, so we'll go back to the node. And to see what this looks like, let's take another node's content. Right, so it's pretty easy to form this address. You'll see it's entity iframe, uh, slash the entity type, in this case node, and then slash the identifier, which is node2. So you're used to seeing things like node2 probably in almost every Drupal site over here. Let's go to node1. So node1, if I go to the bottom, you see I have an embed code for node1, change the embed code a little bit, um, and then I'm actually embedding node2 into node1. So to glance at the iframe properties, you'll see that it's pointing to the entity iframe and then node two, got 98% width and 400 height. Uh, so let's move that for 50, 95, and let's see. So nothing special there. You have an iframe, it's an iframe version of content. You'll see it's not scrolling because uh, there's certain things like the theme telling it that iframes can't scroll. Uh, so you obviously have to tweak it for your theme. But the neat thing, because it is using just any theme, you can actually go and modify the appearance in Garland. So let's make this uh, fluid width. Let's change it to the Ash theme, and then let's take off all the branding. So the idea is of this whole project is that you probably have, uh, if you're going to embed this in other areas, you probably have specific ways that you want your material presented if it's embedded. Uh, if you think YouTube, Right, you have all kinds of different settings in terms of how to embed the video, things like that. Uh, so you'll see, I may change this, it actually changed what its output on the iframe side. Uh, to go to that, you can see I can just go to entity iframe node one, go to two to see what two looks like. Right, so it's pretty easy to generate these. Um, there's also a permission associated with people being able to view it as a, you know, you know, in iframe mode, it respects all normal Drupal entity permissions, um, in addition to the ones that are added in. Uh, so, you know, there's an entity iframe down here, access iframe version. So you could say that people, you know, basically you're restricting people from being able to embed it uh, at that point. Uh, so another interesting 
use case for this. And it's actually one of the reasons that I'm working on this project. If I go to uh, Luna Node 2, and this is the one that's embedded in page one. So we're going to remove the content. And I have a YouTube video up here. So let's embed a YouTube video. So I've got my YouTube embed code. Uh, we see it's 560 by 315. And then we'll just have to kind of remember that. So source, paste that in. So I have my video you know, converting a build site into a distribution. Um, I now have an embed code for actually embedding this node, which has the video on it. Uh, so let's make this, I know this will make it look a little nicer. So we'll go back to system and entity iframe. And we're going to change it back to Stark. Now Stark is a built-in Drupal theme. And it's 315, why not? Um, one of the advantages of Stark is that it really doesn't have anything going on. <laughs> it's kind of the reason you use Stark and visualize things with Stark, is there's nothing to it. Uh, now, if I go back to node 1, which, remember, I have, I'm actually embedding node 2 in node 1. You'll see it there. Uh, let's try and make it the size of the video. So changes to 315, make the width 100% for this example. Save, and we'll see we have the video. Um, but we've got some some cruft here. So this gets into a more advanced development feature with this. So you actually have the ability to change the output specific to when it's used in an iPhone. So if we go to basic page and then manage display, you'll see there's actually an iframe style of output format. And so you can output the fields the way that you want. Maybe uh, for an iframe, you don't want to show the file. We don't actually want to show uh, there's this number field. Right? So we don't want to show the number and that label's in the way. We don't want to show the label. Right? So we'll hit that, save. And now when we go back and the page reloads, you'll see it's gotten rid of that uh, that body field. Now, this currently has breadcrumbs. I'm not sure what the best way to handle that is, if it's um, actually in this module, or you know, you, you still do have to do some theme design to uh, to actually account for things like that. So this is a breadcrumb that's listed in that theme. Uh, if you have a module that disables breadcrumbs, then that would be an issue. Um, but now you'll see we've actually embedded content that's in the site, in the site, but it doesn't really appear that it's out there, right? It's very hard to tell this is actually an iframe. Um, and then if you use a project like FitVids, so what FitVids does is it gives you the ability to, and you'll notice the frame changed, um, you can have responsive iframes. So these propagate downward. So if you have an iframe that's in an iframe uh, that has a video on it, you can actually get it to so scroll. you can get it to respect the dimensions of the 100% width, which is why I gave it 100% width. So you'll see I actually have, and it's most effective there, um, I actually have responsive iframe content displayed in an iframe. So it's a reason that you want to use a responsive um, or a very minimalist fluid width type of a theme for your iframe display. Um, where we'll be using this is in one of our distributions um, that you actually, the whole point is you're posting objects or you're, add, you're adding quizzes and things. Well, long term, we want to be able to you know, shift and upgrade those systems independent of each other, but yet embed the material in a reusable way within our content outlining tools uh, so that the content outlining tools are not completely dependent upon the module set of the other system. Uh, so there's some developer documentation of things you can do, some additional theme tweaks. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please post in the issue queue with the module as entity underscore iframe, and I hope you like it.